Okay, great. Yeah. So, as you can see, when we talk about international trade law, which is here, international trade law, so we are going to talk about many topics related to international trade law. So, first of all, uh, when we talk about tra uh, international trade law, we should take in consideration that we should take in consideration that international trade law it's a part of the international law, okay? And uh, precisely, we have two branches in international law, like in domestic law. We have that. Uh, we have the public international law and we have the private international law. So what is the difference? The first question is, what is the difference between public international law and private international law? And why, why I'm talking about public and private international law? Like I said, international trade law, it's a part of a package. This package is called international law. So we have many rules, legal rules. These legal rules, it's internationality. It's apply on all states. Uh, uh, and precisely when we talk about states, members adhered, uh, uh, members existing or signed, and uh, it's uh, it's exists and it's a member considered as member in the United Nations. When we talk about members, we talk about states and international organization because we have two uh, international subjects here. We have the international. We have member states, which is considered as international subjects. And also we have the international organization, which is con considered like the states as international subjects also. So when we talk about international law, we are talking about international law. Uh, uh, sorry, about international trade law. We are talking about international law. International uh, trade laws, there is a rules, legal rules. This legal rules. Uh, it's a an international legal rules in trade in the field of trade because we have many fields we have the field of trade we have the field of politics we have the field of uh, social and educational and cultural field etc etc we have many fields like in domestic laws so that should be treated Th that mean we should have legal rules that organize or um, uh, put or uh, settle the um, rules that should be adopted by individuals and by international subjects like I said states and international organization states have relations so when we talk about international law why there is international law we have international law because like we know international organization and states have relations could Create relation. Why you could create relation? Because they have legal personality, like persons, individuals, like physical person or national person, like moral person, uh, as example, companies and association, etc., etc. All these uh, entities called have or called entities. It's a legal entities and is recognized by the states recognized by the societies and recognized by the international community so when we talk about international trade law when we talk about international trade law it's the field of trade so we, we hear uh, talking about the field of trade but on international basis that mean all the trades that could be made that could be created all the international commercial relation that could be created between states and also between companies because like i said we have public branch which is a public international law which apply on all the relation between states and we have the private international law which is a public branch which apl apply on relations that could be created and legal acts taken by parties these parties like private or private sector we we call it private sector like companies like you know we have many uh, contracts international contracts which is could be created or signed between companies um, or interstates that mean companies from two different uh, two different states 
That's why we call it international contract. So the first condition to talk about international rules, we should have two members or two entities, legal entities from different states, or we should have two states, or we should have two international organizations existing in two states, or we should have international organizations that contain, that have many members these members is different states and different organization from different states i don't know if you are you are um it's clear for you or you are understanding what i'm trying to explain so very simple to resume when we talk about international trade it's the set of rules that organize or the set of rules for the conduct related to trade that could be made between companies and the private sector when we talk about private sector so that's why we apply international rules or private international uh, rules legal rules and when we take we talk about states we we could give this definition which is the settle of rules that for the conduct of states between each other. That means any relation of any type between states should be organized. We should have a set of rules that organize this relation. Why this could happen? Because like you know, when we interact with others, like persons, like us, individuals, when you, as example, you have, you are student, in the school so you have rights before the school that means there is some rights that psb or the school should be should give it to you or respect it and you have also duties and obligations so sometimes sometimes in this relation could it's a contractual relation what happened that some uh, one of these parties of a contract could violate its obligations. That means he doesn't respect his obligation and duties. So that's why to have the possibility to the other party have, could have the possibility to ask or to make a request against the other party which doesn't respect his obligation, he should, he need a rules, procedures, that could uh, that is recognized by a state or by the international community to use it to protect our interests these interests could be economic could be social could be cultural could be educational etc etc could be political also like you know we have what we call it united nation it's it's like an example to explain the meaning of international trade law. So, if we take uh, as example the United Nations, UN. So, the United Nations, I don't know if you understand, you know the, the role of the United Nations. The United Nations, it's an organ, international organ, it's an international org organization. This international organization, it's an and if we make a classification, it's a an intergovernmental organization because I'm making a classification here because we have many type of classification for international organization. Here we are talking about the United Nations. It's an intergovernmental organization. That mean when we to, when we say it's different from NGOs. You under you hear about NGOs and NGOs that mean non-governmental organization. So when we talk about United Nations, we are talking about intergovernmental organizations. That mean we have members in the United Nations, which is the states. There is representatives um, of these states that exist in the United Nations, in this organization. United Nations have the role to establish peace and security in the world. It's the first commitment of the United Nations. If you read the state of the United Nations, you can understand that the commitment of the United Nations is to establish peace and security in the world. 
which is doesn't happen always because the United Nations is less and less here. So, but it's an international organization related to treat everything, any, any matters related to peace and security. When we talk about security and peace, we, we doesn't talk only about politics. We can talk also about environment. We can talk also about trade because maybe sometimes we, when we say peace and security, sometimes economy could conduct to create a war between states. That means sometimes if there is embargo, there is some sanction or punishment against some states, sometimes that could happen that the state could hand, doesn't or could not handle these sanctions and could uh, be uh, pushed to create or to make an aggression against another state because of these sanctions. So that's why United Nations observe and control everything in the world to try to establish the maximum possible of security and peace and to um, eliminate any type of aggression between states and to also to protect human rights etc etc and also to protect the economical interest or the economic interest of for states so that's why that's why via the united nation so we the united nation members in the united nation so they created what we call wto what is the meaning of wto it's the world trade organization okay it's one of the organ it's one of the organs in the world that have the role to treat any matter related to uh, related to any tra uh, any type of international trade so from where it comes the world trade organization it comes from the vienna convention of 1980 so in the 1980 members 164 member try to sorry I have many links, so ah, I uh, have it here. Okay, so in 1980, members uh, agreed to create an international organization. So my question for you, I will stop my um, I I will stop my share screen to ask you a question. Just one moment, please. What's happening? Are you here? Do you hear yes, me, guys? Yes, we are here. Yes. Okay. So my question for you is WTO. Like I was, uh, I'm trying to explain. What do you consider um, if you think about this? When we talk about um, uh, WTO, World Trade Organization, is it an intergovernmental organization or it's a uh, uh, organization, international pri and private sector. What do you think? Is it a non-governmental organization, NGO, or it's an intergovernmental organization? So, there is somebody who is uh, telling me that it's an intergovernmental organization. Who can, could explain for me why we consider the World Trade Organization as inter intergovernmental organization because there is a, the answer is right. Um, can I try, doctor? <laughs> yeah. Uh, because it's uh, uh, to be efficient, it, it must like uh, the countries, uh, they must have signed agreement with this um, organization exactly when we when we talk about countries that mean that mean give me another uh, term um, agreement like uh, they, they they are part of this organization they have representatives in in the international organization exactly so when we talk about uh, countries that mean states and governments so there is governance that exists yes. in this 
in this international organization. So that's why World Trade Organization is intergovernmental organization. So I was explaining and making the difference between intergovernmental organization and non-governmental organization to give you a simple idea how to make the difference between these organizations. So when we find, when you find an organization, international organization, and where is states that exist in this organization, government, that is representative for these governments in these organizations. So this organization or international organization will be considered as intergovernmental organization or public international organization. Okay, why? Because it has a public interest, a public interest for states, a public interest for government because it's it's represent these states. So this organization or public international organization should and have the role to represent the interest of these governments and these different states. Okay, so it's also the role of the World Trade Organization. Is it clear for now? Guys? Yes, sir, all good. Okay, great. I will share my screen again. Okay, so we were talking about the World Trade Organization. The World Trade Organization, which is um, which is, um, as we said, a intergovernmental organization. This intergovernmental organization have the role to treat anything related to trade international. When we say trade, it's not the trade that we have in a domestic law or in a state. That means two merchants between themselves. If there is any legal conflict that could arise between merchant and for example we take in we take as example france two french uh, merchant okay two french merchant or two um, indian merchant as example if they are in india they if there is any legal dispute that could arise between themselves between these two merchant they have many possibilities. They have the possibility to go to arbitration, to request arbitration, or to go to before the judge, the normal judge, the natural judge, which is a public agent representing India, the public, uh, it's an, a public ad administration. So they have this right. Well, it, when I talk, when I say World Trade Organization, and I'm talking about trade here, any conflicts that could arise between two merchants, this merchant should be from two different states. So the trade should happen between two different states. Why? Because it will be considered here as international trade. When they, I have two merchants from the same state, so they signed, as example, a contract in France, they, they, uh, they are French and they signed their contracts for trade in France for objects and subjects of the contract is made in France and will be executed in France. Here we are talking about the French law. When we talk about two different states, two citizenship, that means one French, the other is, for example, uh, from uh, India or from Vietnam, or from China. So in this case, we have two uh, parties in a, a contract. These two parties have two citizenship, different citizenship, come from two different states. And the trade that will happen between them or will be established between them, the contracts that will be signed between them, it's an international contract. So that's why when here, what we are going to apply is the international law in general. That's why I'm talking about international law. And uh, precisely the international trade law, because it's a contract to make trade between two merchants from two states, different states. And if there is any rules that should apply, it will be given, it will be, uh, it will be established 
by the World Trade Organization first. It's the role of the World Trade Organization to, to update the rules, the settle of rules. I was talking about settle of rules uh, for the conduct of the states and for the conduct of individuals and to determine and to fix the rights and duties of these states and and uh, individuals in the world. So the World Trade Organization has the rule, has the role to establish all the settle of rules for the conduct of states and the conduct of merchants in different states for international trade. Is it clear? Any question related to this point? Guys? I should hear you. It's so clear. Okay, so I was talking about World Trade Organization. I asked it if it's a non-governmental or governmental organization. Like you can see here, um, membership or members of members of uh, the international trade or the World Trade Organization. We have as example here. If we take as example F, okay, we have Fiji, Finland, France, okay. If we take as example U, okay, we have Uganda, Ukraine, United Arab Emirates, United Kingdom, United States, Uruguay. So we have here all the members. When we say Romania, Russia, Russia, or or Russian Federation, Rwanda, etc. That means we are talking about states here. So when we talk about states, that means directly we should think, we should uh, say that World Trade Organization is a governmental international organization, public international organization. That's why when we talk about the World Trade, so we have two elements here that give us the possibility to make a classification or to define the World Trade Organization. So first, as I said, it's an international organization. And I said also that it's a public international organization. Why it's an international organization? Because I have members in this organization come from different states or I have states, different states. So when we have different states, it's the international law that will apply. So that's why I'm saying that World Trade Organization, it's an international organization. Why I say also, because I have the same elements that apply, why I'm saying that World Trade Organization is a public international organization because I have members in, these, in this organization, which is states and government. So when we talk about Germany, we, call, we talk about France, United States, etc. We are talking about governments. We are t talking about representative, which is a public representing these states. So that's why it's a public international organization. When we say that it's a public international organization, that means public international law will apply on everything related to this international organization. Any question? Yes, uh, sir. Uh, so is it is it? Uh public or intergovernmental now i'm confused okay uh, you are talking about world trade, world trade organization yes exactly is it is it public or intergovernmental it both it's ah, okay. both okay it's intergovernmental because we have governments governments yes. and it's public because it's represent a public members which is states as you know, public and public uh, states and governments is public uh, agents. It's a public admi administration. So that's why it's a public. So in the classification, we have many types. Like I said, we have many types of classification. We have classification based on, as example, geography. When we talk about geography, we can say that it's a regional organization. Doesn't change anything in the statue of this organization when we talk for example about uh, economical elements or economical criteria we can give as example wto which is a world trade organization because its interest or the interest of the wto is created to resolve and to settle rules related to economy 
And when we talk, for example, about United Nations, it's another classification. We talk about political field or political classification. Why I give the example of EU, European Union, or United Nations as example for a political organization, it's another type of classification because EU and uh, UN, it's two type of organization, which is international organization, which is non-governmental organization, but also it's a polit political organization because it treats anything related to policy and politics between states. So that's why I could say both. We could have many type of classification with, with that we could find in one organization. Is it clear? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, great. So W2O, so when I say many classification in one organization, W2O, we should have now, we should understand now. Yes, exactly. So it's both. So uh, when we say WTO, we say that WTO first, it's an international organization. It's a public uh, organization. It's a governmental organization. And also it's a economical international organization. So we have many types of classification. So we could classify it as we wish is if needed. Okay. So I will share again my, my screen. Any other questions? Okay, international trade law. So we were talking about World Trade Organization. As you can see, we have in 2016, the end, we have now 164 membership in the WTO. So we have 164 states members it could be state and others but we have in general states in the wto the role of wto we have many roles as i say mainly the role of the wto is to um uh, is to uh, to treat and to settle the rules and to resolve any legal dispute that could arise between states sometimes it could happen like the examples that i'm going to give you now uh, in the presidential of Trump in United Nations, there were a problem between USA and China, which is which exists uh, now uh, also. But what happens that there was a, some uh, problems related to trade, which is a problem uh, created by globalization. So because of globalization, the uh, U.S. market was uh, saturated with uh, Chinese products, which is, uh, which is, was very, uh, very, um, w which causing a problem for the U.S. market. So that's why Trump, uh, President Trump, took the decision to, uh, to, um, to change the way of treating with the Chinese government. So that's why there was a problem which arose between USA and uh, China which, and China. So in case of any legal dispute, that's the meaning of legal dispute. So if we find that there is any legal dispute that could arise, arise, that means it will be created for political issue or economical issue between states, the right or the uh, competencies, the right is to the WTO to treat this uh, legal dispute. That means if two states have any problem between themselves, they could go to the World Trade, there is an organ in the World Trade Organization, which have the, um, the, arbitra the arbitrator or the arbitration council of the World Trade Organization, which could arbitrate between states to resolve any legal dispute. So it's the role of the WTO. Why I'm talking now about the WTO? Because I think that it will give you a, a right idea about international trade law. I will go. Uh, I will go with was like I was explaining about Vienna Convention of 1980. I was saying that how we created how we created the WTO. It begin with it's begin with 
United Nations Convention on Contracts for International State of Goods. So the, the WTO, the International Rules in Trade, it's based on the first or the main sources in international law to uh, resolve any problem. Like I say, WTO have the role to resolve any problems that could arise between states, how it will, uh, it could resolve these rules or uh, resolve these disputes. First, WTO should respect the main sources in international trade, which is the United Nations Convention on Contract for International States of Goods. So first of all, international and in international trade law, we should know that we have the WTO. We should also understand that we have the United Nations Convention on Contracts for International Sales of Goods, which is a um, very important convention in international trade. So it's the main, the main two elements in international trade law. So we have two main elements until now. We have uh, WTO and we have also the Vienna Convention of 1980. So what is the meaning of Vienna Convention of 1980? Okay, Vienna Convention of 1980, the United Nations Convention on Contracts for the International Sale of Goods, what I'm trying to uh, put here on PDF. So the definition is a multilateral treaty. That means it's a convention or a treaty between states, multilateral. That means there is many members that signed. Like we said, WTO, WTO have... 164 members that means there is 164 uh, signatures to give the authorization to enter uh, to this wto that establishes a uniform framework for international commerce that means there is standards that apply on um, on international trade we cannot we cannot in international trade um uh, apply many type of standards even even in traveling and in flights we have standards we have european standards we have international standards how for example to um, to let the plane fly make a flight from uh, a state to another etc so everything in in an, in anything we have standards in hr we have human resources interna uh, international standards in marketing, also we have standards. In management, we have standards. In law, also we should have standards. So that's why we have, in international trade, we have standards in law. That's why the basics or the main sources for these standards is United Nations Convention on Contract of, for the International Sales of Goods, which is signed in 1980. So the... Um, to know more about the, this international convention we have we have here the presentation of this uh, this treaty or this uh, agreement international agreement so if we go to the first page of the agreement you can see the agreement here guys yes sir yes sir we can okay so first we have the introductory paragraph in the um, united nations convention it's like a constitution in the french constitution you have preamble also in the uh, in other constitution in the world you can find also always preamble that means it's a introductory paragraph which is give an introduction about the objective and the aim of the constitution the aim of the this convention etc so we have here the objective and the aim of this uh, convention which is contracts for international sales of goods and services so the states party to this convention so we could understand here from the introduction of this convention that we have states parties parties when we say parties that mean parties of a contract so states here are the parties of uh, is a parties of contract to this convention bearing in mind so here we are talking about the objectives and aims bearing in mind that 
the, the broad objectives in the resolutions adopted by the six special any any decision taken by the United Nations you should know that any decision taken by the United Nations is called resolutions uh, when we talk for example about uh, you know, uh, European Union any decision taken by the European Union which apply on European states it's, it's called directives French European and the French student here they could know that uh, they know that decision taken by the European Union is called directives. Here, when we talk in international law, when we talk about United Nations, we talk about decisions. This decision is called resolution. When there is a resolution, we have, there is a resolution when there is the majority of the majority of the um, General Assembly of the United Nations or the majority of the Security Council in some cases, in some situations, when they take decisions, it's called resolution. This resolution will apply on the members of this organization. Here we are talking about international, international convention on contract for international sales of goods, but it's a United Nations convention. That means it's established by the United States United Nations. As I said, United Nations have the majority. We have uh, almost 200 members, which is states in the United Nations. So when we have, when we talk about conventions, that mean all these members accepted all the rules, all the settle of rules that exist on this on this conventions. That means they should abide. They should respect the rules put in this convention. Is it clear? Yes, sir, it's clear. Okay, so here they are telling us in the introductory paragraph of this convention that it was adopted by the sixth special session of the General Assembly of the United Nations on the establishment of a new international economic order. That means the United Nations, members of the United Nations, they um, uh, had a session which is the sixth special session on 1980 of the General Assembly like I said there is many organs in the United Nations we have the General Assembly and we have the Security Council here this resolution is taken by or decided by the general this decision which is a resolution decided by the General Assembly of the United Nations so it comes from the United Nations, members of the United Nation, nation because there is a majority with, that voted on this convention. That means all the members of the United Nations should respect this resolution. They could not violate the standards related to this resolution. On the establishment of a new international order or new economic order, that means everything related to everything related to economy international economy is there any question i will check just my chatting room because i'm i see that there is message sir are you going to make this document sorry document the pip it's available on the extranet yes of course i will send everything don't worry about this okay we have time don't worry we have some time that, that mean uh, I could send you all the documents so that I'm going to use uh, step by step, okay? So, uh, as example, the convention, and also I could, uh, uh, I will uh, put it or upload it on extranet, and I, there is a record, you can see it, you can look it, uh, look after it, and on Google, you can type, for example, convention for uh, sales of contract, uh, for contract for sales of goods, etc. Uh, Vienna Convention, you can find it. It's very simple. Everything related to international law, law is very simple. You can find it on Google, Google in general. But my responsibility is to upload all these documents on Excel. Okay? So, we were talking about the international convention, which is the second element, main element in international trade. So, as you can see, the objective of this convention put is to establish, is to have or to establish a new international economic order, considering that the development of international trade on this basis of equality and mutual benefit is an important element in promoting friendly relations among states. That means when we say here mutual benefit, that means 
when there is a trade, the two states treat between themselves, or there is trade between two states, this trade should be with mutual benefits. They could not, for example, use their uh, force, their power, to, for example, to enforce the other party or the other state to accept a deal. This deal uh, could not be um, uh, equal. That means there is equality between states, even, even if there is a small state, a big state, etc. So, if we take an example, if there is a commercial or trade deal or a deal, commercial deal between USA and as example, uh, Azerbaijan, okay, or Georgia, or Ukraine. USA could not use its political power. They could negotiate, they could make uh, like a plan to get the best of this negotiation in a, an international contract or commercial contract, but they could not enforce the other party which is georgia to accept uh, any rules in the contract in this international contract that we could be made between usa and georgia to accept provisions in this contract that violate the rules of the convention on contracts for international sale of goods so any rules that any provision in a contract that violate any international rules set by the international law here the dominating rule will be the international rule it's not the rule of the contract it's what we call it uh, i think i have it on my desktop i will try to see if i have it on my desktop just one moment to explain yeah so when we talk about when we talk about um, uh, when we talk about, I think that you 